Hello everybody, Wild Bill for America here. Thank you for watching. Now the story I'm about to tell you will not make Democrats happy. They love to portray themselves as the party that cares about the well-being of black Americans. But history tells a different story. In fact, history clearly demonstrates that the Democrats have continuously fought to oppress blacks in this nation. And the story of Oda Benga is one they don't want told. Now, Benga was a pygmy who lived in Africa with his wife and two children, but war with the neighboring tribe brought the tragic death of his family, and Benga himself ended up in chains as a slave of the enemy tribe. Things looked pretty bleak for him, but one day Samuel Werner, an American, gained custody of Benga and brought him to the United States. Now normally when a person suffering from brutal oppression is freed and brought to the U.S., it signals a happy ending. But unfortunately, Mr. Verner was associated with Madison Grant, a progressive lawyer and advisor to Democrat Woodrow Wilson. Grant was also a well-known promoter of eugenics, the so-called science that claimed that the white race was superior to the darker races. Those liberal Democrats took that friendly little black man and gave him a home in the primate cage at the Bronx Zoo. They dressed him like a savage and made him carry around a baby orangutan like it was his baby. Now the purpose of doing this was to demonstrate the scientific proof that evolution was true and that the white race was clearly far ahead of blacks on the evolutionary scale. Now Christians were outraged and spoke out against the evil of caging a human being in a zoo. The response from the liberals was to ridicule the Christians as being non-scientific persons who failed to understand that the pygmy is not rated very high by scientists on the human scale. This is liberal compassion at its best. But the Christian community was determined to free that man, and finally the zoo relented and allowed Benga out of his cage. He wandered the zoo freely, but was dismayed to find himself followed by crowds who mocked him. Some even tripped him and laughed at him. Children tormented him without mercy, and Benga became resentful and angry. One day he asked for a soda at the refreshment stand, and when they refused him, he got into a fight with them, and it took three men to put him back in his cage. This is what happens when we allow ourselves to be divided by race. Division always breeds animosity and bigotry. That's why our Pledge of Allegiance declares us to be one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Our founding documents declare that all men are created equal, and our founding fathers followed that up by fighting to eliminate slavery once and for all. And when the great war to end slavery finally erupted, it was Republicans for freedom fighting a slave-owning Democrats. So, what became of Oda Benga? Well, one day the zoo visitors were very surprised to learn that he had constructed for himself a bow and arrow. He didn't kill anybody, but he managed to wound a few of his tormentors, and that was how Oda Benga got out of the zoo. He was placed in the Howard Colored Orphans Asylum, where he longed to return to his homeland. But after several years of discouragement, Oda Benga built a ceremonial fire and took his own life. This is a disgraceful story, and Madison Grant is not a man to be proud of. But still today, some of our public schools bear his name. If today's liberal Democrats had any decency, they would rename all of those schools after Oda Benga, because that is a name that truly demonstrates what liberalism is all about. This is Wild Bill for America. Thank you for watching, and God bless America again.